Now let's go over pixel get color. Unlike the pixel search feature that allows you to search coordinates for a specific color, the pixel get color feature is gonna search those coordinates and return the color that they currently are. You can use this with the pixel search feature in order to get more accurate results. To give an example, for one of the games I made a bot for, the UI was transparent. And that's not totally bad, but the problem was when I would try to get the color of what I was trying to search for, it would be varied because since the UI was transparent, stuff was happening behind it. And as a result, you know, a player would move across the screen and the color is no longer present. So what you can do in situations like this is right before you're searching for the pixel color, you do a pixel get color to see what it is right before your pixel search. That way you can almost guarantee that you won't run into a problem like that. So let's get started. First, we're going to define the pixel get color and we're going to give it the x and y coordinates i'm going to do this in paint so i can make this a little more accurate i have the window info tool up and i'm going to use the finder tool to get the coordinates of the inside of this circle so i'm going to copy that and i'm just going to paste it right there and we're going to put a close parenthesis now this is going to get the color but just like the pixel search function it's not going to be stored anywhere so at the beginning let's make a variable we're going to call this color equals pixel get color so now the color of these coordinates right here is going to get stored in this variable now let's create the pixel search function so we're going to press enter and say chord equals pixel search and let's just grab the coordinates from when we got our pixel color we're gonna paste comma paste and we're gonna say that the color is actually gonna be the color we got from our pixel get color and we're going to put a close parenthesis. Once again, I want to mention that you can put a comma after the color and put a shade variation like one or any number. And that variation, say we were using one as an example, would mean it's going to search for an acceptable color that's either what we're looking for, one variation up or one shade variation down than what we've got. Then we're going to say if at error then, and we'll just print the tool error the original color was not found and we're gonna sleep for say three seconds and then it'll exit we'll say else if not at error then we'll make a tooltip the actually make let's make this a little more obvious congratulations you've won and uh, we'll also throw in something that's relevant original color has been found and we're also going to sleep for three seconds and then we're going to do end if now something i want to say on this if at error and else if not at error you don't have to do it like this you can have one of these so if at error do this and then just turn this into a straight else statement you can do either one because with a pixel so Search, there's two answers. Did we find the color or did we not find the color? So there's no other alternative. You're either finding it or not finding it. You can't really add extra stuff. But because I want to demonstrate that, you know, the difference between if and at error and if and not at error, I'm going to set it up this way. The last thing I want to do is at the beginning of our code, I'm going to do a sleep for three seconds. I'm going to do a tooltip telling me that the program is starting and then it's going to get the color and then I'm going to do another sleep. But here I'm going to sleep for seven seconds. I'm going to do one more tooltip and I'll explain all this in a moment and uh, checking if color is the same with a dot end quote. Perfect. So now let me explain this to you real quick. What I just did wasn't necessary, but for the purpose of this video, what I'm going to do is run the program, bring up paint, and I'm going to let it get the color of this empty circle. Then I'm going to fill the color with a, fill the circle with another color. And I want to see if the pixel search can recognize that it's not the initial color we got. And in order to make sure I as a human can understand what the hell's going on and to make sure that I can catch it in time, I added some tooltips just so I can keep track of it. All right, now let's test it out. I'm running the program, bringing up paint and I'm going to let it see. OK, the program is starting. It got the initial color. Now let's see what happens. Error, the original color was not found, which means the color that it detected in the pixel search was not the color it detected in the pixel get color. Now you can see I'm going to leave it pink 
Run the program one more time. Program is starting. I'm gonna turn this to white and the original color was not found. Well, why did that happen? Just a second ago, the original color was white and now the original color was pink. Is my program broken? Well, no, every time you run the pixel get color function, it's gonna reset the value of the variable color. So I can call it now and it'll be pink. I can change it real quick, call it again and it'll be whatever I changed it to. I can call it again, it'll be whatever I changed it to. So this is just gonna store the very it's gonna store the color of whatever is in these coordinates at the time we call this now just for the sake of you know making sure it works I'm not gonna change the color at all and we're gonna see what it says when the color is the same as the initial color congratulations I mean congratulations you've won anyways that's a demonstration on how to use the pixel get color function hope you guys enjoyed it